Keith, on. thanks so much for coming to have a little talk about some dead bodies. Let's end this, con this uh, convention the right way. I'm going to bring on a couple EPs and a few cast members from CSI Las Vegas on CBS. First off, executive producer and showrunner Jason Tracy. Executive producer Jonathan Littman. She plays the team leader, Maxine Roby. Please welcome Paula Newsom. He plays investigator Joshua Folsom. Please say hello to Matt Loria. And finally, he plays Hugo Ramirez. He's the dude in the lab who gets to do all the fun, diggy looking things into bodies. Here's Mel Rodriguez. Yeah. Are there any CSI fans here? Who watched the original CSI? Yeah. Way to go. Jonathan, this first one is for you. Why did the show even have to go away? Why did it go away back in 2015? I don't, you have to ask CBS why it went away. Uh, <laughs> we weren't ready for it to go away. We thought the show was doing great still. Um, and then I got a call one day that said they were ready to wrap it up. So, so it, how there really was no, like. The ratings are pretty dang decent, especially yeah. nowadays. With, with, yeah. yeah. So when did the talk begin to revive the show? The talk began to revive the show, um, well, for me, like the day after we, we went off the air. Um, but it was closer to about early 2019 when we realized that you know, 2020 would be the 20th anniversary and that so much of the world had changed and this notion of alternative facts and you know, it just seemed like the right time to bring back the show that was about facts. There was about to bring back the show that was about science. And we, the 20th anniversary felt like a good box to put all of that in. And then COVID hit and we missed the 20th anniversary and premiered 21 years to the day after, our first, after the first one premiered with this version of the show. To the day, to the day. Jason, it seems like quite a challenge with the new show. You have to retain the old ways, but make it fresh for a new audience, right? So where did, what, what, how, where did you start with that? Oh, no challenge at all. No challenge. <laughs> uh, no, it was, uh, it was actually just a lot of fun and a huge privilege to be starting from kind of, you know, big shoulders. Um, and my pitch from, the, you know, from, from day one was to sort of leverage the weight of the fandom against sort of the lab and, and to create this sort of serialized story that could kind of bridge a season of television and call into question whether or not the work that had been done at the lab was authentic and genuine and, and sort of bring a couple of people, our favorites, Grissom and Sarah, back off the boat uh, with those stakes. And then I was really excited right. to introduce the characters that these guys play, uh, Paula and Mel and Matt and Mandeep, um, that was just a group of folks that have been rattling around in my head for years, and I think we found a nice balance. Yeah. All right, let's, let's start with you guys. So when you first met, those first few days on the set, did you meet in Vegas? Did you have a get-together at one of the tables at Caesars? I mean, what were those first meet and greets like? <laughs> my first meeting, I first met Mandeep. We went out to dinner to this wonderful restaurant. We're a bit of, like, gluten addicts. And, uh, and later, we got together and on Zoom and just did a Zoom meet. <laughs> Jason, everybody sent us like bottles of wine just to like ease it out. And we had a lovely time. That's how we met. What about, the, so is that the same for the two of you? When did you guys get to go to Vegas for the first time? I, I, ne I never went to Vegas. Never? No. That's really sad. He's, he's never been to Vegas, ever. <laughs> ever. I've never, never, ever been to Vegas. I mean, That's it, not true. Isn't that a prerequisite for this show? I mean... <laughs> I do yes. feel bad, but he's in the morgue. When you get a when you get a Las Vegas show like CBS flies you out on private jets and you start partying uh, at like 4 p.m. on Friday night and then they put you back on the private jet sometime Wednesday the following week and you don't remember it. That's kind of like a a hazing thing that CBS does for all Vegas shows. They're they're scared to take me. I'm banned for Vegas <laughs> So how did you first meet Billy and Georgia? Did you, how was that? that was on the Zoom that Paula mentioned. We all had this lovely Zoom where we got to, we, it was funny, Anthony Zyker was on the, the original Zoom as well. And so the three of them were able to, you know, unearth some of these glory stories from how it all began. And, and it got us in the spirit of it from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Paula, what was Billy like? 
Billy, Billy was a little scary. I'm not gonna lie. All right, good. You got I right mean, to it. I mean, because the truth is, I mean, this man, you guys know, he walks with with history behind them, you know. And I'm a Chicago actor, so I was familiar from the Chicago theater days. But when I my first scene with him, I was a little nervous, you know. But then finally, I got to the point where I was like, "F it, I'm done." And then it just start doing your work. Why was it important, you guys, to have them as a part of this? Yeah, I, th I think that um, Grissom was sort of the bedrock foundational piece for the original, and it's his ethos that sort of, you know, kind of suffuses the whole show of follow the evidence. And it felt like something where, I mean, he was our first target. That's where we went, you know, right away to try to get him back because but all of the iterations of the show. Out of your story, though. Yeah. It really started with Jason's original pitch for doing CSI Las Vegas, which was to have something happen to one of our you know, people and have someone come after the lab. So it felt organic to want to get Grissom or Sarah or you know, someone to come back to defend the lab as it was left and bridge history that way and have a handoff to a new group. Um, so really, it started with Jason's incredible, I and mean, it really was a phenomenal Brilliant pitch idea. when he came to talk to us. Was the temptation there to try to bring back as many folks as you could? You know, we had to have, a, we had to have room to sort of, and, and, and to tell a new story we felt like, in, and, and to open a new chapter in a new era, that if, if there had to be some new blood as well. So I, we were looking for about the balance that we got. All right, this is for the actors. So the thing about this show, it's a procedural, there's not a lot of huge character development, and if it does, it happens over a long time. Mm -hmm. So how do you keep that interesting for yourself and for the audience? I'll speak for myself. Um, as an actor, my job is to inhabit a character, and for me, that really means the emotion of going from event to event to event. And whether that event is one that is about the science, or whether that event is about a member of one's family, you know, that's the job. So it's easy, it's part of the job. How about you guys? And for me, you know, uh, I, I get this new canvas, uh, this, this, this body to autopsy and kind of <clears throat> search and figure out things about, and that's my, you know, that's my, that's my, happy, that's my happy place, you know. Um, we, uh, we had this wonderful man on set, uh, Daniel wrote... Holstein. Holstein. Yeah, who, who was just, just this magnificent source of information. Uh, he was medical examiner, chief medical examiner in Los Angeles for 25, about 20 years, chief medical examiner in, in Las Vegas uh, for, for some time. And he teaches at La, uh, Las Vegas University now. And so just the things I learned about the human body and uh, alone were just, just, just amazing. And then also digging, kind of picking his brain about how to keep these really kind of horrific things that, that he'd have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and not bring them home, you know? Uh, so, um, yeah, if that answers your question. And I, I agree with, so much with what Paula said, where, you know, I, I almost feel like it's more of a challenge to, if you've got a big scene that you've got to do where you're breaking down and crying and, and you're saying, you know, screaming at your mom or your dad, why don't you love me, you know, like, then it, there's, it just seems it's a lot more immediate. It's right in front of you. You can put all of your energy into it. But these guys, these characters on a day-to-day -day basis are, are meeting people at their most tragic um, or traumatic moment. And the other characters that you're interacting with are the ones that are going through those types of emotions that I described. But the, the challenge for the actor that keeps it so exciting and, and so... Um, it's just a great and inspiring challenge to me because you have to find the gravity of that character and the foundation of that character 
and be able to keep them, keep them composed in a way that's not two-dimensional because you don't want to do nothing opposite these people that are going through a traumatic event. You want to still be professional because a real CSI isn't going to engage with them in the same emotional, in, in the same emotional fashion. They have to stay composed and do their job. So that makes it a really exciting challenge. And then I think Jason does an extraordinary job of interlacing little treats along the way. I feel like, I, I feel like in every single episode almost, there was some subtle hint about Josh's past and what his family was like and what that means to him. But Josh isn't going to re you know, reveal his hand all that readily. So if you really track it, you can see how he feels about all the other characters he's working with. And you can also see where he comes from. And I'm looking forward to more little morsels along the way for hopefully many years. <laughs> and just to, if I could add on what, what Mel was talking about. You guys, right now, there are people in the basements of buildings all over the nation who are dissecting and using the remains of people to figure out what happened to their loved ones. You know, people that do that sometimes three days in a row, the guy that we're, she was talking about, Daniel Holstein, he sometimes, he said that people will come after him after he was really involved in a case. And then, man, have you, have you eaten? He was like, what day is it? It was like, it's Friday. Oh, I've been here since Tuesday. No, I haven't eaten. There are people that are doing that right now, right now, who find it, who have, it is their dharma, it is their dharma to help and find out what happened to our loved ones, you know? And that's, that to me is amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping after 10 episodes and all those scripts written by you and all that time spent with the medical examiner, you may have retained a little CSI information <laughs> for a quiz right here at Comic-Con. <laughs> So I'm going to run a couple of t terms by you. You two can participate as well. I use that very Excuse important me. research. I, I, I Google to find some things. And let's see how you do. All right. You were supposed to notice that. I was leaving. What did you do? I got up to leave. <laughs> All right. First up, what is, and you can just raise your hand if you know the answer first. What is, um, I'll start with what presumably is an easy one. What is trace evidence? Is that you? Go. I, I actually don't know. I just wanted to make a noise. <laughs> what is trace evidence? Trace, trace evidence is uh, anything that would be left at the scene of the crime. Particles, fibers. Particles, fibers, saliva. DNA. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, yes. All right. Fluids. What, that's good. Okay. What is a control or blank sample? Control or blank sample? In, These are really hard in to any make. scientific experiment, you want the control and then you want the variable one, right? So I guess the control sample would be like the standard where nothing, we know that nothing has been augmented in this sample. Correct. It was uncontaminated. Okay. Rest. I feel Good like job. We should Good job, Sherwin. Okay, these last two are pretty hard to me. Okay, do you, do you know what bindle paper is? Bindle paper. I found this on an official Anyone? CSI That's, um, website. I'm pretty sure that when hobos go riding is? the rails, they put everything in a bindle, and it's their paper. <laughs> <laughs> it says it's clean paper folded to use to contain trace evidence, sometimes included as part of the packaging for collecting trace evidence. That is yes. the yeah. other yeah. definition. That, yeah. that's right. now sorry, I've I'm really bombing you guys before. with this. I'm so sorry. It's only the first season, remember. All right, so this is by far the hardest. But if you get this one, this would be super impressive. It's called, do you know what low cards exchange principle is? Oh, I used to know what it is. What is it? You've Could heard you of it, right? Again? Jonathan, you've heard of it. Yeah, I have. I'm sorry. Could, Could you, you repeat the repeat question? That? It's, look, it's a low card or low cards exchange principle. It's a transfer of evidence, isn't it? I low like carbs? Low <laughs> Low-card, L-O-C-A-R-D. I know, I'm just going to let Matt ask. It sounds like, like an eBay, it's some kind of an eBay trading. It's something to do with, like, <laughs> Pogs or Pokemon. Remember and then Pogs? You, is it the transfer of evidence from one place to another? You're very cold. All right, it's the, it, I'm so sorry. I feel, it's the theory that every person who enters or exits an area will deposit or remove physical material from the scene. It's physical exactly. material. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah. go, a Pog. Right. Right. That's exactly right. Buddy. Yes. That's exactly right. <laughs> you know, if anyone has any questions, we will take a few questions if you're interested. <laughs> Ooh, there's somebody right here. Is there a mic close by? That's what Bindle paper is. 
Go ahead. Got one. If, New, if, if Nick like, Stokes or Eric, his character was Greg. Greg, if they're coming back for a second season, which by the way we don't know yet, there's going to be a second season. But my sources say it look, it's looking good at CBS. I, the yeah. the answer is there's any number of uh, awesome characters that uh, you know it, it populated the CSI universe for years and years that we would love to have back. And as season two sort of takes shape and hopefully you know gets off the launch pad. We got some work ahead of us to figure out, you know, who can we um, bring in in the most compelling way. So hopefully, yes. That sounds promising to me. Anyone Maybe else? Maybe need to do a pair of shoes. Anyone else? Maybe. Go ahead, right there. She's right there in the middle with the sweater hat. There you go. All of the fun. Okay. Uh, do you take off my mask? Okay. Um, I, do you guys investigate real crime scenes, or is it just like a um, a set? Like you're really acting, or do you actually like it's based on true story, or uh, it, everything is staged? It's totally uh, fictionalized, but uh, we have told stories in the past based on um, real stories, and uh, me and the writers have definitely done like ride-alongs out in Las Vegas with the actual crime folks that uh, the, the criminalists go out there, and it's it's fascinating work that they do. But to control our environment and to not make anybody, uh, you know deal with any real bodies <laughs> here on CBS. We, we, it's all fake. I feel like the day will come when you guys will eventually be construed as, I mean, mistaken for real CSI investigators. Thank you. If it hasn't happened already at the grocery store, by the way, did you work today and find a dead body? Mm -hmm. Anything like that? Does mm -hmm. that happen? Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else have a question? All right, before we, uh, before we wrap there's, up, there's, one there's a guy oh, there's one right here. He has a question. Is this a question? Yeah. He's mm -hmm. working it out. OK. Oh. Microphone. I do have a question. I'm wondering as far as like CSI, the actual acronym, what does everything uh, include in that? Like, is it just murders? I mean, is it blood? Is it police? The evidence that they find, how are they able to like find those that are deemed the bad guy, um, who maybe have raped people? Like, what's all of the rules that are involved with the CSI process? That's uh, cool. It's crime scene investigation. So CSIs are called out to anywhere there is a crime, um, and you know mostly. Murders are the number one thing, but it will also include robberies, home invasions, um, anywhere the police do not have an obvious suspect. Um, it is the collection of scientific evidence left behind, DNA, fingerprints, hair fibers, and anything that is used as a tool to find a suspect in the crime. This show pretty much introduced us to a line of police work that most folks didn't knew, know existed. It's true. It, it, it is, um, it was when it came on the air and it was kind of just post the OJ trial where we had heard about DNA and blood drops and things really for the first time. And this was a whole new way of solving a crime. Well, it wasn't a whole new way. It was a whole new way for television to solve a crime, which wasn't about putting a suspect in an interrogation room but empirically saying science provides facts that are irrefutable to both the guilt and now the innocence of people. It has turned on its head and being used to exonerate um, people wrongly convicted as well. Yeah. All right, before we wrap up, oh, we got another question. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, can I take a look? You sleep oh, okay. Hello, um, this is more like a personal question. But I wanted to ask all of you guys, what made you think um, uh, um, auditioning for the part in CSI, like what made me, uh, you think like, oh, this is interesting. Oh, what did you learn from your experience during the time you were in that show? What did you learn from your experience playing these roles? Yeah. Or what did you learn yeah. from, what is it, I think it's what is it meant to play this role? I'm sorry, so what did we learn from our experience of playing these yeah. roles? Yeah. Yeah, like, did you learn something like, oh, I didn't know about this, oh, this um, made you research or go into more in depth of what you could, 
what this show is about. Did, so I'm going to repeat, uh, what did we learn in our experience playing these yeah. roles and what what does that make the show about? Is that what no, I understand? What, like, what makes you... Can you speak a little louder, honey? I just... Yes. Like, what did you learn from it? What from your experience in there? Like, did you learn something that you, you didn't know or... Okay. Yeah. yeah. Got it. So, very simply, it's kind of... It's the value of... You know, when you have... You meet people who have a drive or who have a dharma, right? Who've chosen something that they want to do for our, in their lives. And I've just... Uh, have so much respect and even awe of people who are CSIs, who are, who take, you know, the remains of our loved ones and to find out what happened to them, who meet people on the worst days of their lives. And it is their job, no matter how horrific, to find out what happened. That's amazing to me. I think, I think for me, um, uh, finding a way to you know that 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 is definitely true true for me because I learned that in Daniel um, that it really was important for him to find answers for these families, but at the same time to um, have a certain amount of detachment from this thing so that he could be very clear and get the answers that he needed to get. The, to, to really to really be very clear about what what how this this crime how this crime actually happened and to really really get the um, the ABCs of the the picture the whole picture when he's looking at this body as a as a painting really wow. of of how how the crime actually happened, so that he could t tell it to the t tell the story to the to the uh, to the to the uh, as a medical examiner to be able to CSIs. tell to to tell the story to the CSIs, and that was very very important to him. He was meticulous about it, mm. um, and um, I, I I couldn't I really can't I can't emphasize his passion enough. And it was really, to some degree, very... He was an artist, really. He is an artist. Um, so that, that's, that's what I took away from that. And, and uh, again, Daniel, our real CSI um, technical advisor on the show, uh, what was incredibly revealing to me was how essential this extraordinary science is to the process of solving crimes and how sophisticated it is, especially nowadays. And the, he gave me a statistic that kind of blew me away. If you think about how busy police forces are around the country, in any given city, the, the radios are always squawking with crime after crime after crime, little and small, and all of them have to be sorted out and solved. And so if you think of how massive that number of crimes um, is, and Daniel told me that, I forget the exact number, but it is something like 94 point something percent of crimes get solved through the work that the CSIs do. And I remember asking him, like, the reason he brought it up, because I said, like, how, how good are you guys at your job? And he's like, less than 5% of the time, we won't get you. I mean, it's just mind blowing to think that they can use all of the same sort of sort of science that we try to reveal as best we can on the show, right? And we're using, again, real, real technology and real machinery to do the same jobs that they do. And to, to know that if you've done it, the likelihood of you getting away with it in the face of the science is very low. That was pretty mind-blowing to me. Jonathan, I sense there's some folks out here who have never seen CSI. Where can you binge this show, which you have to? It is so much fun. It's a little, it's a little bloody, it's a little violent, <laughs> but it's good stuff. Where can you find it's it? It's great mystery. You can find it on Paramount Plus. Um, all seasons are up there. Um, uh, you can find a little bit of it on Hulu as well, but everything's on Paramount Plus. It looks great there too, by the way. Um, and it's um, airing on CBS and. Wednesday night is the finale of season 
one of CSI Vegas. Um, so you can go home and watch the first 16 seasons of CSI. You get that done this week. And the nine episodes of season one, all on Paramount+. Plus. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us, everyone. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom.